Good morning. Good afternoon. How are you, Carlos? Good morning. I'm good. I'm good. How are you, Daniel? Good. Good. Nice to see you again. Yeah. Long time no see. That's right, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome. Well, welcome. And thank you for, for, for your time, you know, to, to be here. This is going live right now, but we are also recording this session so people can join and, and, and check it out later. Perfect. Yeah. So, well, today it seems that it's only the two of us. David's a bit stuck on, a, on some businesses, yeah. but yeah, I think we can, we can kickstart our conversation. Awesome. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I like to, to begin with, maybe you can introduce yourself and, and tell the people who, who are, who is Carlos at all. Because I'm actually quite curious about how was your journey into sustainability, how, how you became interested into that and then how it evolved with time. Yeah, of course. It's, it's, it's been basically a, a long journey. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, so my name is Carlos Terol. I'm originally from Gran Canaria in Spain, mm -hmm. although I've been living in, in the UK for over eight years now. It feels like yesterday we have been here for a long time. <laughs> and my, my background, it's in civil engineering. So mm. I studied civil engineering at uni back in Spain. And it's funny because I didn't really know what to study. I was like good with maths and science, but I didn't really know what to do. And my dad said, why don't you become a civil engineer? So maybe one day you can bring water to a village in Africa. <laughs> and it's funny, it, it's really funny he said this because back then when I was 18 years old, I didn't care about Africa. I didn't care about helping others. I just wanted a job that, you know, could make me rich. And I was super into like sports cars back then. And so I just wanted a job that could, you know, allow me to buy maybe a BMW, a Ferrari one day. <laughs> and that sort of, I, I had these goals in my mind. <laughs> Luckily, I've changed since then. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was kind of like the first seed that I got into a little bit of the impact space, mm -hmm. right? That social, social impact, yeah. sustainability, all of that. That was the first seed that my dad luckily planted mm -hmm. in my, in my head. But then like I studied, finished my studies and I came to the UK and back then in 2015, I decided to start giving back a little bit. Bit. So I joined a charity called Engineers Without Our, Borders. Right. Which, I, I wanted to join that yeah. one too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So I, I joined them back in 2015 just because I wanted to start doing something, you know, outside of work that would give me sort of that meaning, that purpose that I think I was even looking back then. So I joined that. I started running events for, for the charity mm -hmm. locally where I was living in, in Reading. And that led me to meet lots of change makers, lots of people who were into renewable energies, into sustainability, making mm -hmm. the world a better place. And I started getting you know, a lot of inspiration from meeting these people, having lots of conversations, learning more about the topic. And it was then that I actually came up with this idea for Good Ripple, which is a platform that I'm working on right now to try and connect change makers. Because I realized that it was actually really difficult for me to meet these people who are into sustainability or social impact. Um, I put a lot of energy and effort into finding mm. these people. And I found that some of them were living in my street wow. or in my neighborhood. Yeah. And I was, this is really mind blowing. I could have been living here my entire life without knowing you are just there down the street. Right. Yeah. And that even led me to think. How many other people do we have around us mm -hmm. that want to change the world and just, we don't know about them. That's right. And that's how sort of I came up with the idea for, for good people to, to create that platform, to bring people together, to change the world. That also started, you know, again, sparking more interest into learning more about sustainability and, and sharing that with others. So fast forward to last year. I decided I've, I've always been super, um, keen about writing. I love writing. I mm. love sharing with other people. I decided to start 
writing on LinkedIn about sustainability, sustainable lifestyle, how to become a change maker. So yeah, I started last year in November. It's been 11 months that I've been sharing content mm -hmm. on, on LinkedIn, trying to inspire other change makers to, to join forces, collaborate and start, you know, making more of a positive impact. And that's kind of been the journey. And for me, I've got a lot of inspiration from meeting really amazing people like you and David nice. that you know, are fighting for a better world. I really get a lot of inspiration from meeting people like you and that keeps me going and keeps me motivated to carry on and do more of this. So yeah, again, thanks to you for saying what you're awesome. doing as well. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for those, those words. And yeah, I mean, then, then would you say that, that good people came first, came before you started, I mean, came as at the same time as you started your own journey to sustainability, because you started switching lifestyle while you had this idea of developing good people. I mean, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah I think they, they came pretty much at the same time. I think it was when I started with this charity, Engineers Without Borders, that then I thought there should be already something like this platform out there where I can find these mm -hmm. people without having to put all of this energy and effort. But I found that there's no such a platform. And even eight years later, there's not really yeah. such a platform out uh, there yet. Yeah. So, but yeah, so it's been pretty much there from the very beginning. Indeed. Awesome. Awesome. That's, that, that's very interesting. I thought it was the other way around. Like you became interested as an individual and then you became also, you know, interested in, in sharing and connecting with more people. Mm. But yeah, as, as someone, if someone that is listening to us or watching us, And they want to take small steps into, into living more sustainable. What would you recommend based on, on, on your, on your experience? Mm, good question. I really love this question. <laughs> so here, there's, there's a little bit of a, a dilemma because if, if you are into the sustainability space, you hear a lot about individual action is not going to change the world. We yeah. need to take collective action and systemic change. That's what's going to change the world. And although that's true in a way, it doesn't really empower people to take action. Mm -hmm. Because when we think, when we say, well, individual action won't change the world, we need systemic change. Systemic change mostly means mm -hmm. governments and big Government. corporates taking mm -hmm. actions, right? So suddenly what we're telling people is, Just sit back and relax because this is not your problem. Somebody else yeah. will deal with it, right? And I, I totally disagree with it in the way we are communicating. I think we need to change mm -hmm. that narrative and start differentiating between low impact individual action and high impact individual action. Mm. Because you saw even those collective actions where you join movements, you spread the word, you inspire others, you sign petitions, you call your and politicians, all of those are high impact individual actions that yeah. contribute towards systemic change, right? So in that sense, I think I haven't met anyone who takes those high level impact actions without having started first with the low impact individual mm -hmm. actions. I haven't met anyone going to a climate protest that didn't start swapping their plastic bottle with a reusable one or mm. ditching the plastic straw. So I think we need to recognize that there's power That's in right. those small actions because they help you build the mindset that leads you to take high impact ones that ultimately leads to like, uh, you know, and systemic change. So I would say for people who are listening, if you're just starting your journey, don't feel overwhelmed that you need to take all of these big actions. You know, you don't need to just go in the streets and, and protest. Obviously, if you can do that, then that's amazing. But also recognize that sometimes you need to start small and start with what feels natural to you, what feels doable to you. And yeah, maybe that's just swapping your bottle with a reusable yeah. one yeah. or, you know, trying to eat more sustainably, maybe eat a little bit le less meat and do a little bit more of um, plant-based food. And, you know, it's about finding those little steps that will compound over time and will take you to do the high impact actions. That's, that's, that's actually super inspiring, you know, because uh, as you said, most people that claim that individual action doesn't impact, 
they are neglecting the power of also doing it collectively. And yeah. that's, that's something I believe that, I mean, you can, we can, we can't act in the collective way if we are not taking action as individual. And that's so empowering. hundred mm. percent. And I think a lot of the people trying to call for collective systemic change, like, you know, they, they've got good reason to do that, but just the narrative, the way we're telling people about it is just not empowering. It's, as you said, like it's, it's asking people, well, just sit down and somebody else would deal with it. Way. And we need to really empower people and say, hey, you can actually make a difference. Don't just sit down and wait for the governments or corporates. They're not going to change unless we put enough demand and pressure on them through that collective, sort of that collective action. And collective action is just a sum of many individual actions in a coordinated exactly. way. Exactly. So individual action can really, and in my opinion, it's the only thing that will change the world. It's just that, yeah, we need to focus more on those high impact individual actions, mm -hmm. but understand that for a lot of people who are just starting to learn about sustainability, just joining the fight against climate change, they might not be able to just go do those high impact individual actions straight away. So it's totally fine to start with the low impact ones. Because again, that builds up the mindset that eventually will do the, the high impact ones. But I think my, my advice there is start with the small if you haven't started yet, but also be aware that we need to focus more, more on those high impact individual actions, but they're still individual actions, just yeah. combining them with other people. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you look at it as a journey, I mean. It's like a never ending story and, and it's part yeah. of the, of the process too. I mean, it also depends a lot on, on the context. For instance, uh, in my home country, Venezuela, there is no real recycling industry, you know? So if I, even if I do a lot of effort in recycling myself, uh, everything's going to the same, you know, landfill. Yeah. So yeah. At, the, at the, at the end of the day, it's like a kind of a waste of time. But then also it depends on the, on the context where you are based and then what solutions you have more, uh, you, you have closer to you and, and, and easier for, uh, to, to start with. Right. Absolutely. Yes. I it's funny you mentioned that because I, I met somebody from Venezuela this year, I started chatting about climate change and they had never heard about climate change Whoa. before. <laughs> Whoa. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And. And I think we sometimes believe that, you know, because we are in this bubble surrounded by That's people right. who care and mm -hmm. who are fighting for climate change. But the reality is there's still a lot of people out there who have never heard about it, don't believe in it. They're just too busy to bother with it. Yeah. And we really need to do our best to inspire these yes. people to become part of the conversation, mm -hmm. right? Because it's, as you said, we all have different backgrounds. We're all in different positions. We have different stories. You know, people who are from Petro state, like Venezuela or many others, they probably haven't heard that much exactly. about climate change. And, mm -hmm. and it's just not their fault. It's part of the system. Exactly. So we need to do our best to spread the word and inspire these people to, to start joining forces as well. Yeah. Yeah. And also, uh, speaking a bit more on the, on the system, uh, I think that yeah, I'm tying this back to the collective action and, 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 you know, taking individual action. You know, I think sometimes that the market, I mean, thinking in the capitalism, capitalist way, the market is already answering to individual actions. Otherwise, we wouldn't be seeing more plant-based products or more sustainable products. I mean, and, and it's not by chance that that's happening, right? It's because they are listening to individuals <laughs> uh, who are more interested in that. So individual action is and actually the pathway to, to change companies and, and governments, right? hundred percent. Yes. I think it's, it's offer and demand, right? Parts of the issue. If, if there's more demand for sustainable exactly. products, exactly. then the market's going to react to it. Sometimes maybe not for the good reasons, maybe mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. for, for making yeah. profit from that. Exactly. But I do believe that even doing the right thing for the wrong reasons, it's yeah. still the right thing. It's so, that possibly. I mean, it's still the right thing. So yeah, ideally we would have businesses. I think we're going in that direction. We're seeing so many more 
purpose aligned and mission driven businesses out there. And as you said, it's just a reaction to more people demanding it. And yeah. I think also it's the combination of the individual action of people just buying more vegan stuff, for example, or people buying more eco-friendly products, but also all the people who are taking the collective actions and actually signing petitions, mm -hmm. you know, calling on, calling on government, on, on um, going, going to, to protest. So it's a combination of the two, yeah. there's pressure on the demand side and there's pressure also on directly on the system, on the government. So when you get those two together, yeah, you see the change happening. That's right. right. Yeah. Sadly, sometimes it's not as fast as, as the emergency requires, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that's, that's the biggest challenge that we are seeing a movement going into the right direction, but it's not going fast enough. Yeah. And I think that's where we need to be inspiring more people because I'm a huge believer that the only reason we still have climate change is because not enough people care. Mm -hmm. And that's because, not just because they don't care directly, but because they're either too busy to bother or they haven't had the opportunities in their life to spark those conversations mm -hmm. or somebody mm -hmm. just sharing mm -hmm. something with them mm -hmm. that can click and then they can go on to learn more and take actions. So for example, I attended the Climate Fresk workshop two weeks ago. I don't know if you've heard about them. But they do these workshops to, to share with people the basics of climate change in a very fun way. It's pretty much like a game. Okay. And it was really mind blowing for me. Like I learned so much in there, even if I'm already into the sustainability mm. space, but I learned a lot there and it really sparked so many conversations. And now I'm sharing that with other people. There's other people who are going to that workshop because I share it with them. I'm going to become a facilitator myself because I was so inspired. I want to Whoa. share this with more people. So, you know, the, the ripple effect of these little things, it's huge. And we really need to be working more on that one, just talking about it, sharing and, you know, being very um, inclusive in a way and very open to, to a dialogue, right? Because we all have different opinions about it and we all have different beliefs and, you know, some people may not believe in the data or there's other studies that they've seen that show something else. So we really need to be discussing this in a constructive way and bringing yeah. everyone into the table so that we can move forward together. Yeah. And that, that's actually where good ripples comes in, right? I mean, I've seen it myself since I started, you know, within the, the community. It's overwhelming sometimes the amount of people that reach out to me uh, or to us through yeah. good ripple. And I think that's such a big movement and a, and a growing movement that, I mean, I, I feel very excited about it. Can, can you tell us uh, how is the, how is good people right now? What are your plans for the near future? Yeah. So we nearly, we're already 11 months since we started the community. So next month will be one year, our first anniversary. And so mm -hmm. far we are 1700 people in the community. Mm -hmm. So we've grown in one year from zero to 1700 people, which, um, it's, it's quite exciting. Yeah. So many change makers mm -hmm. that want to come together, want to connect and create more good mm -hmm. ripples. And, and yeah, as you said, like there's so many ripples starting to, to happen from there. Like I get to hear from lots of people. You know, that they made connection with other people. They're now working together. They're collaborating on projects. And it's actually hard to measure I, that because it's not what you see. You know, it's not like how many people have joined, but how, how people are collaborating and what other projects are coming out or what other inspiration it. are coming mm -hmm. out. It's, it's very mm -hmm. difficult to measure, but I'm, I'm getting to hear, like you just share, for example, right? That you're getting to to meet with some people. So it's really there. I think the, the challenge for us is because what we're doing is connecting people and trying to inspire others. It's very difficult to have that measurement of what's the impact that we're making. Yeah. But I do believe that there's an impact and, and I get that measurement from hearing from people mm -hmm. like you and, and others. Now the plans for the next year. So we want to focus a lot in being more proactive in connecting people. Because mm. right now you join the community and then it's up to you to reach out to other people. Mm. And that's fine for some people, but for most people, 
are really busy and, you know, they can't be bothered to go on Slack or another platform, whatever. And that's totally fair because especially these are change makers, right? These are people who are changing yeah. the world. So I'm quite yeah, happy yeah. that, that yeah, that's how they're all busy, right? Yeah. So okay. we're thinking about how to make that more proactive. So we're thinking of a few different ways that we can spark more collaboration and more connections in a, in a proactive way that we put less effort on the community members. So for example, we're thinking of making one-on-one connections through email, finding uh, good matches between people, whether it's mm. location-based or people who are interested in the same topics or people who need help with a specific topic that somebody else can help with. So we're thinking of starting to do that and, and help the people connect very easily um, through that. And we're also thinking to come back. We did a test over the summer of a networking, like a speed networking event. Okay. And it actually worked pretty well. We had, I think, around 35, 40 people there. Mm. We did half an hour of four-minute meetings between people at one-on-one. And people really liked it because they had the opportunity to meet five new people in half an hour exactly. on one-on-one. And then they took the conversation offline and they continued mm. you know, developing those relationships. So that worked really well. We wanted to bring that back on a monthly basis to facilitate that connection at a, at a different level between people. And then on the background, we're also trying to move forward with our ultimate goal is to have our own platform, our own mobile app where right. people can go and connect with others mm-hmm. really easily. Because mm-hmm. at the moment with the community, it's a little bit more, there's more friction yeah. to do that just because, you know, we are restricted by whatever platforms we are using. So we would like to have our own platform where we can make that process you know, much more effortless and, and fast. And so we are working on the development of that mobile app in the background. Mm. Still pretty slow because, uh, you know, we don't have a lot of resources, mm. but it's, it's going forward slowly. And, and that's probably something we would like to focus more on, on the, on the second half of next awesome. year and try to develop that, keep it, bringing it to the next stage. Yeah. I, I know that the platform is free. Is, is your pa- plan to, to keep it free? I mean, I think it's uh, awesome, but also at the same time, it needs, I mean, you, you or your team need, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. some way to make ends meet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and that's something that is, is one of our challenges and something we've been thinking a lot about. How can we make this financially sustainable yeah. as well for, for me and the team? And how can we grow it so that we can you know, put more energy and more effort into yeah. it. So what we're planning to do, and, and it's still not fixed, and we want to ask people openly in the, in the community what they think and what their ideas are to, to co-create a model together. Mm-hmm. But our idea so far is we want to keep the community free because we don't want to put a barrier for change makers to connect with mm-hmm. each other. We want to make it as accessible as possible. So the community will be free forever for everyone. Now we think it is more of a premium model. So we would include some additional value in the community, Mm -hmm. being maybe through these weekly or bi-weekly connections, being through these maybe more exclusive speed networking events that I mentioned, Mm -hmm. maybe through other exclusive resources that would only be for the pro Mm -hmm. members of good people. And they would pay a subscription base to be a, a pro member of the community. And that's the idea. We really want to keep a free version of it for everyone to come in and connect and chat because we believe in the power of people coming together Mm -hmm. and we believe in creating 8 billion imperfect change makers. And we don't want to put a barrier to that. Exactly. The the free version is going to be always there, but then yes, we're planning on doing that sort of monetization to try and make it sustainable financially. Yeah. Yeah, Makes total sense actually. Yeah. And uh, thinking about also your, your journey to, to, to landing into good people. I mean, you already mentioned uh, uh, briefly about it, but for people that is also worried about, you know, working in a higher purpose or making an impact with their work. I mean, because you jumped, obviously you jumped from civil engineer to, to something Probably totally different. Yeah. Also my case, I'm a geophysical engineer now I'm working on carbon removals. Yeah. So, <laughs> so 
So, so how, how can you, what sort of advice do you have for these kind of people? Because I'm sure many people is just looking at the wide world without knowing mm. what to do. Yeah, hundred percent. I think my advice here, it's that this concept, you're probably familiar with it and probably most people, the Ikigai, right? Which is about finding something you love that you can be paid for and that you're good at. And I like that concept, what the world needs. And a lot of the time we see the Ikigai concept without that part. And I love it when I see it with that part included, because I think mm -hmm. that's so critical. So it's finding something you love, you can be paid for, you're good at, and the world needs. But with a caveat there, or maybe two, one of them is that sometimes you can work it the way around. And it's about find something that the world needs and then become good at it, learn to mm. love it. And eventually mm. you'll be, you'll be able to be paid for it because you're good, you love it. and the Exactly. World needs it. But <laughs> I like to do that reverse engineering, reverse thinking there, because sometimes we're too focused on, okay, what am I good at? Uh, what can I do? Or what do I love? with this and, and, and that's a little bit of a limiting way of thinking. We can go to the next level and think, okay, what does the world need? What do I believe the world needs? Is it about, you know, tackling climate change? Is it about helping refugees? Is it about, you know, eradicating extreme poverty? Mm -hmm. Is it about something that you're passionate about and, and then work it out and there's always something that you can do to help that cause. And, you know, there's so many opportunities nowadays to learn about new topics, do theater courses. Yeah. And if you already have some professional experience, try to think of those transferable skills that you have that you can bring onto that new mm. industry. Because for a lot of people doing that step, it's, it's quite scary and for good reason. But I think, you know, if you're doing it because that's your passion, that's what you believe, you should be doing for the world, for other people, just go do it. You know, as you do it, you'll make mistakes, you'll learn along the way, but you'll be going the right direction. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot more meaningful than just spending our whole life doing something just because we're good at it, but maybe it's not having that positive impact yeah. in the world. Because ultimately, you see a lot of people reaching older ages and they're starting to think about meaning and purpose and they regret not having done more of that before. Mm -hmm. So my advice is to avoid that regret when we get older. Let's mm. start now finding That's that right. meaning and that purpose and, and trying to do something good for the world. And you know, it doesn't have to be something big. It doesn't have to be climate change. There's so many big issues in the world mm. that we can help in whichever way, whichever degree we can. Yeah. That it's, it's very powerful. Yeah. And, and again, like maybe, you know, to, to make it a little bit less risky, a way that I did it, for example, was I started my first sustainability brand as a side hustle whilst I was doing civil engineering. And I did learn so much in there through creating that brand, doing that business that, you know, you suddenly need to learn about everything exactly. from brand to marketing, to finance, to managing people. And, you know, you can do that maybe a little bit on your spare time. Then what I did was went part-time. And then I left the job. So, you know, it doesn't have to be like, okay, I'm going to stop today and, and jump. tomorrow I'll find something. <laughs> but yeah, it can be something, you know, for some people that, that works. works. They go yeah. like, okay, yeah. I'll stop today. And, and that's amazing for, for, for people who can do that. But it doesn't have to be that scary or risky. Yeah. You can do it more of a transition. Maybe if you have your job, maybe you can do a little bit of volunteering right. over the weekend and start yeah. learning about something else and, and test it as well. Because maybe you feel you want to do it, but once you start doing it, maybe it's not the right mm -hmm. thing or you feel mm -hmm. it's not what you really wanted. So it's good to test as well and just be able to, to figure out whether that's the right thing for you or not. And then just be what yeah. changing it. Changing it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's good Perhaps to have a brand knowing that the plan is there to be changed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. I couldn't agree more. And I've seen more people, more and more people volunteering into, into the climate space, especially because mm, some people feel that they don't know enough. And if you volunteer for something, you will 
learn tons of it in a very short amount of time. And then you can, you know, make your decision and, and, and switch if you want, right? 100%, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think exactly that's a great way to start learning and growing that interest that you have into the topic. Because then you start meeting people who are in that area, you will learn from them. And again, you might make mistakes, learn from them. And I think the important thing here is that there's nobody out there that knows absolutely everything about yeah. climate change. Not even scientists, yeah. like, you know, they focus oh. on certain areas. And we need to acknowledge that we're not going to learn everything about climate change. And that's fine, you know, because sometimes I see the fight between people, you know, who are in the climate change space, trying to make the world a better place. And they start fighting with each other because of, you know, minor, maybe semantic differences in yeah. some mm -hmm. sort of data. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's not really helping. That's not really helping people to come in and, and embrace that imperfection of, of change making. Yeah. Because if we keep calling each other hypocrites because we're not perfect, nobody's going to be motivated to come in. You know, if, if you have to go 100% vegan, stop flying, sell your car and do that everything tomorrow, otherwise you are a hypocrite, then very few people are going to join are going this, to do this movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to recognize that we won't be perfect. We can achieve, you know, we can, we can aim for it, knowing that long-term goal, maybe you can get there. Yes. But just recognize this part of a journey yeah. And, yeah. and just embracing that other people are also imperfect. We're not imperfect. Yeah. And, and what we need is, as I said before, 8 billion imperfect, imperfect change makers, change -makers. Not, not just a few perfect ones. That's not going to solve the issue. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. What, what do you need in good ripple? What, what are you looking for? I mean, do you need help with, for, from more people? Are you looking to grow your team? Good question. I think at the moment, be totally honest, we're all bootstrapped. We don't yeah. have any funding or anything. So the team is mostly just me with some help with, with a few people, mm -hmm. a few hours here and there. So the most help we could get right now, it's spreading the word, getting more people into the community, because that helps us get a lot of feedback from change makers, seeing what works, what doesn't, how can we make it better. That feedback, it's the most valuable thing for us right now. So for anybody who wants to join the community, they can go to nas.io slash good dash ripple and, and join there for free. And I just share that with any other change makers out there. We're all about bringing people together to create more good ripples of positive impact. Amazing. So that's, that's really yeah. the most important thing for us right yeah. now. And I would say if you are early in your journey or I mean, even at any stage in your journey, uh, one of the most impactful things you can do right now is actually joining a community, especially Good Ripple, but I mean, any other community in the climate space, because this space has something really positive. It's super open compared with, you know, professional spaces like engineering or stuff mm -hmm. like that. And people is always super willing to help, to connect, to, you know, to, to do and spread the, the, the world, as you mentioned. So yeah, I 100% recommend you join Good Ripple. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Thanks for that. I totally agree. I mean, whether it's Good Ripple or any other community for sustainability and positive impact, I think there's a huge power in there. One, because it's easy to feel alone in this big fight against these big issues because they're really big issues. Yeah. And when you try to tackle them on your own, it can be really overwhelming. You know, there's a lot of climate anxiety these days around for good reason, because, you know, it's, it's a big challenge, but suddenly you go into this community and you see that you're not alone. There's so many other people yeah. out there who are also like-minded like you and want to achieve similar results exactly. you want. So that is definitely super powerful, something to do and, and join forces. And then because it just helps you learn more about the topic, meet with like-minded people. And as you said, I think the good thing about the climate and impact space is that it's people who care and because it's people who care, they're super welcoming, they're yeah. super inclusive mm -hmm. and it's just a really nice bunch of people to be right. with. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. And perhaps Carlos, some closing remarks to wrap up. 
what would be like for you right now, the most impactful thing besides becoming part of a community that I could do with my lifestyle to change or to start changing? Hmm. Good question. So I would say for someone who's already a little bit into sustainability and in this space, probably one of the most impactful things we could do would be to focus on those high impact individual actions. Mm -hmm. And to me, the one I'm most passionate about is inspire others. Mm. Because that's that's how we can really grow Love this it. movement yeah. beyond our bubbles. It's about bringing more people together. So, you know, whether that's, you know, sharing content on social media, having a chat with people around you in your street, in your neighborhood, whether that's becoming a climate threat facilitator so that you can empower more people to take action. I do believe in this, you know, empowering others to take action is probably the most impactful action one can do Amazing. as an individual because suddenly it's not you, but it multiplies, yeah. it amplifies. So I would try to focus on, on those actions. Yeah. That's incredible. I never heard that, that answer before. I think it's, it's actually the most powerful thing we can do. <laughs> yeah. 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 And what would you say about people that, you know, are the naysayers that people, because sometimes, and I, I did feel it uh, at the very beginning, like, should I post this? Should I share this on my socials? Uh, because of course we are going to find people that nah, they just say like, no, this is, you know, BS or this is, and here comes another vegan <laughs> or something yeah. like that. Yeah. What, what would you say about that? Yeah. Good question. And I think it's, it's part of the journey. There's always going to be people who disagree with us. Yeah. And you're never going to be able to make everyone happy just because we're living in a diverse right. world. Yeah. Um, so I think recognizing that, that yes, there'll be people that are against it, but if it's something that it's really aligned with your values and you feel that's what you need to do that's right it. now to help the world, go for it. Yeah. Go for it and try not to fight with those people as well. Don't get into the, the fight of, you know, going back to them and fighting. Just recognize that there'll be some people who don't agree. You know, they say that it's probably not worth spending your time fighting with a climate denier, for example, yeah. because your time would be better spent somewhere else inspiring other people who really want to do that change. Because at the end of the day, we're not going to convince 100% of right. the people, but, you know, exactly. we need to try to mobilize as many as possible. Awesome. So, yeah, don't fight with those. Just uh, recognize that there'll be people with different opinions. You can have the conversation openly and from a constructive way, but mm -hmm. don't start fighting with those people. Yeah. Just focus on inspiring the ones that are ready to start creating positive yeah. action. Mm. Amazing. Well, Carlos, thank you very much for your time today. I think it was super open, uh, mind opening, I think. And I, I guess we'll see, we'll see you on, on good people. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, thanks a lot for having me here. It's been a, a real honor. I really yeah. enjoyed it. Awesome. Bye. Take care, man. Awesome. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs> Cheers. Bye.